Welcome to my channel, Purposeful Play, where I talk about all things early child education. I'm Danielle and I teach 4K in Wisconsin. And we have 11 more days of school until summer break. Actually, today is almost done, so I'm gonna say 10 more days. Actually, that isn't even 10 actual school days. That's just 10 days total. And it's only, let me count how many days. One, two, three, six more days with the kids. Wait, I gotta count this actually. Thursday, Friday, Monday we're off. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Five more days with the kids, five. So I'm super excited. And today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite teacher books, professional development books that might be some good reads over this summer. Don't stop this video because if these books are not difficult, they are fun, they are have really practical ideas in them and I think you will enjoy them. So let's get started. The first book I'm gonna share is called Purposeful Play and it's a teacher's guide to ignite deep and joyful learning across the day. I read this book several years ago as part of a book club with the school district. It was an optional book club and it was fantastic. What I love about books, well, I don't like to read like textbook kind of things. So this one, I love it because it's the things you read in here, you can actually say, oh yeah, I'm gonna use that in my classroom. This is how I'm going to use it. This is how I can change it to um, meet my needs. So it goes, um, it starts off with talking about the importance of play and what play is and why it's important for children and uh, talks about setting up your environment and different the spaces that you use and the materials that you can use. Um, also the different centers that you can set up in your classroom. Um, a big chunk of it also talks about the importance of social emotional learning through play and um, how that can be achieved. Social emotional learning can be achieved. And then um, talking about tapping into students' interests and how you can use student interests to um, plan your centers and activities. And um, if you're using the creative curriculum, which I feel like teaching strategies should call me up and say, hey, Danielle, you want a job? Because I talk so highly of this curriculum. So. If you're not using it, it's not a big deal, but it, it just, everything that you read in this book just goes along with the creative curriculum. And there are bits and pieces in here that um, you can take right from this and use it in your classroom today. So I guess that's one thing um, I just love about this book. I, I highly, highly recommend it. The next book I'm gonna recommend is actually in a series. I believe there are three of them. They're called Loose Parts. And if you don't know what loose parts are, they are, well, it's actually what it is, loose parts. It's things from nature, items from nature, items that you were going to recycle. Um, just, I sometimes call it junk, but just small items that the kids can manipulate. And these books show you how you can use these materials to um, in play and how the kids can learn and what they are learning through playing with these loose parts. Um, and in these books, I love, love the color pictures because they're just fantastic ideas to use. And, um, you know, the lists of things that you can, um, use as loose parts. And I don't know if I've shared this before, but I didn't do it this year, but in the past I've done math bags. Um, and the kids have these little tiny, I don't know, canvas bags that I bought on uh, oriental trading I think I'll link it down below if you want to if you want to use them and I just write on the math bags and once a week the kids bring in up to 10 small items they can't be toys and they are going to be things that will stay at school forever and so instead of having to go out and buy loose parts or find loose parts I have the kids bring them to me and each week we would do a um, during one of our small groups the kids could share their loose parts and I don't plan the small group activity. I'm not saying, okay, this, this small group activity, we're going to be counting, we're going to be sorting, because it always depended on what the kids brought in. It just sort of naturally would 
um, I don't know, just an activity would just come up naturally. And the kids loved sharing the stuff that they brought. And then later on, I would put those things out for activities during center time and play time. So the book does give you some really great ideas um, and things that you can get. And I just wanted to share with you how I get my things too. I will link down below the, the series of books and hopefully you'll check them out because they're super easy to read and look through and get some amazing ideas. This one is called um, The Big Ideas of Early Mathematics, What Teachers of Young Children Need to Know. So this one's a bit more textbook-like, but um, the way that it is presented and set up in each chapter, it's easy to read and the information is fantastic. Um, before reading this book, I felt like teaching math was, um, it was hard and it was hard to sort of include it in play and make it um, a little bit more natural through play. So um, this has great ideas. The big, um, the actual big ideas, they are sets, number sense, counting, number operations, pattern, measurement, data analysis, spatial relationships, and shapes. And it goes through um, a little bit more in more detail, each of those big ideas. So sets, um, and these were the three like small main idea. I don't even know what you call it. The other main ideas, not the big one, but the little more ones. Anyway, um, attributes can be used to sort collections into sets. The same collection can be sorted in different ways and sets can be compared and ordered. So each chapter is broken down. It's almost like um, if you use the gold teaching strategies, gold assessments, it's almost like it's got the big objectives and then it's broken down in the different domains. It has practical um, activities in here. It, it has um, sample of specific things that have happened in student classrooms. It's almost like a, um, it's not anecdotal, but it's almost like, I don't know how you would say it, quotes from teachers and things that they have done in classrooms. And um, this was also one that I did in a book club. And we read, you know, like one chapter at a time and came back and talked about it and sort of answered some questions, discussed what we were doing and just a huge um, idea sharing group once a week. So this one is again, another really great one if you have some um, teacher friends that wanna read it together and um, get together. Even now, like when we're not getting together in person, this would be a great one to do in Zoom. Um, does anybody wanna do book club with me? I don't, I don't know. I think I need some new people to do new book clubs with. That would be fun. Let me know if you'll be interested. The next one I have is from um, the NACI website. And NACI is the National Association for the Education of Young Children. And there is a, you can, I think you can buy them individually or you can buy them as a bundle. This one is called um, Exploring Math and Science in Preschool. There is um, Expressing Creativity in Preschool. And then there's also um, Learning about Language and Literacy in Preschool. And, um, Again, I, I like it short and sweet. Oh, I actually have even written notes in this one. It talks about how it's connected to other areas of the curriculum. There's resources, there's great color pictures, there's specific activities that you can do with the kids, um, all relating to math and science. And all three of the books are really great. And they're nice and short, easy, quick, and um, wonderful summer read. And the last one is um, Lisa Murray on play, the foundation of children's learning. And again, it's a book talking about the importance of play, why play is important, and um, why it's important to like the social emotional development and cognitive development and um, physical development, spiritual development, all that kind of stuff. And why that's why play is so important for all of those things. It's a little bit more textbook like, um, and there are no pictures. I am a fan of pictures, but there are some really great lists and some ideas. And um, I like at the end of each section, it talk. It has this little um, little pair, not paragraph, but bullet points of 
a review of that section and then also some ideas or points to think about. Actually, it's called some things to think about. So little questions like, hmm, am I doing these things? Should I be doing these things? Um, they're just, I don't know, it just ha makes you start thinking about it. Am I making enough time for reading stories? Do I have good books available? And that also even gives a list of a ton of really good books. So this is actually the one I read last summer. I had never read it before last summer. Of all my years of, of teaching, I had never read this one before. So um, yeah, that's the last one I want to share with you. And then I wanted to tell you that I am going to read a new one this summer. I'm going to tell you what it is. You can tell me if you've read it before and if you would recommend it. And um, would anybody be interested in doing a book study? And what does that look like? Well, it would be us, whoever wanted to do it, um, choosing a book together, deciding how much we would read and how often we would meet. It would be a virtual meeting on Zoom or something similar and discussing and going through the chapters and sharing ideas and stuff like that. Um, would anybody be interested? If not, that's okay because I'm still going to read this book anyways. Okay, so the book, I'm going to grab my computer so I can really tell you. The book I'm reading is Literacy Beginnings, a pre-kindergarten handbook. And let me tell you what um, it's about. So it says, in this book, they discuss ways to support the beginning literacy skills in preschoolers. The authors look at language, emergent reading and writing, and ways to support all types of literacy play in the classroom. And it is all through play. A valuable resource included in this book is the Pre-K Literacy Continuum, a guide for observing and supporting literacy behavior. Doesn't that sound good? And I did um, watch a little review um, and a little synopsis on the pre-K pages. Um, and I, I love a lot of her stuff that she does. And she actually also has um, some book study posts that she did on um, that one. I haven't looked at those yet, but I am going to go back and look at those. So I'm going to order that book. That's going to be my summer read for um, this summer coming up in 10 days. And that's it. Those are the only five books I want to share with you. Um, share with me what your favorite professional development books are. And thanks for watching. And have a happy day.